all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. In your opinion, was it humanly possible to win the Tour de France without doping? Seven times in a row. This, this is, they say he's a bit of a show off in the big head. Well, who can, who can say that he hasn't earned it? He hasn't earned it. Yes, he has. He has earned the gold medal the hard way. He'd be riding them for the, the best in the world. Not more than perhaps 50 will finish this race, but nearly 200 to start. He's coming with an incredible rush, and Cloden has realised it too late. Would you do it again? You know, if I was racing in 2015, no, I wouldn't do it again. Because I don't think you have to do it again. If you take me back to 1995, when it was completely and totally pervasive, I'd probably do it again. People don't like to hear that. But that's the honest answer. Yeah, that's the honest answer. But, but, it, but it, it's, it's an answer that needs some explanation. And, and, and it's, I mean, I look at everything, you know, when I made that decision, when my teammates made that decision, when the whole Peloton made that decision. Like, let's, we, we get it. It was, it was, an, it was a, a bad decision in an imperfect time, but it happened. When Lance Armstrong did that, I know what happened because of that. I know that um, I know what happened to the sport of cycling from 1990 to 2005. Um, I, I saw its growth. I saw its expansion. I know what happened with the industry, the cycling industry. I know what happened to Trek bicycles, 100 million in sales to a billion in sales. I know what happened to my foundation from raising no money to raising 500 million dollars, serving three million people. Um, 
do all those people want to, do we want to go make a different decision? Do we want to take it away? I don't think anybody says yes. The toughest conversation had to be with your family, your kids. Well, it's, you're right. I mean, that was not, it was not an easy conversation, but it's also not, um, it's not over. All of my kids, no matter how old they are, will watch the Oprah interview. The older ones watched it live. I can't say, hey, we talked about that 10 years ago. This is over. And that's the deal that I have with them. We can talk about this whenever you want. So it's, it's an ongoing commitment and promise. To them. When it comes to Livestrong, the cancer foundation he started in 1997, he says it's hard to watch it from the sidelines. I'm proud of what I did there. I'm proud of what the organization did my 15 years there. I mean, how could you not be? It was, we, we raised a half a billion dollars in 15 years. We changed the lives of millions of people. Um, but it took a lot of work.